When I thought about this commandment this week, and when I was growing up, the sixth commandment was always taught to me, thou shalt not kill. So I thought about that. And when I did some research on the word and the commandment, really the word kill, the proper translation is murder. And it should read, thou shalt not murder. Because there is, in fact, a distinction between kill and murder. Exodus 20 Chapter 20, verse 13. Some versions of the Bible still say, you shall not, thou shalt not kill. Other translations say, thou shalt not murder. And I was always brought up to think, thou shalt not kill. That's easy. Thou shalt not murder. It's not as easy. And not the physical sense of murder, as we're going to learn today. In Matthew chapter 5, and verses 21 and 22, it reads... You have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder. And whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Now this particular scripture here, and these are the words of Jesus, is saying that it doesn't necessarily mean the physical act of committing a murder. It's what are you thinking in your minds in that rage of anger? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that we all have had those thoughts. I know many a times people, I wish that person were dead, or I wish this bad thing upon that person, or whatever. So when we talk about this particular commandment, it does get a little bit more complex when we talk about what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 5, and verses 21 and 22, that it is what's in your mind as well. 1 John chapter 3, and verse 15 also reminds us of that. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So hating somebody, you're a murderer, according to the scripture. In Genesis 9, and chapter 9 and verse 6, Whoever sheds man's blood, by man's blood shall be shed for the image of God, he was made man. The Sixth Commandment is one that can be misleading, as I said, with the word kill. And the Hebrew word kill really is defined as murder. In the Old Testament law, it makes clear distinctions between a justifiable homicide and unjustifiable murder. This commandment has been greatly misunderstood. And the results of the misunderstanding leads to serious error. Does this commandment forbid all killing of any kind? Is the taking of another human life always sinful and wrong in God's sight? Is all killing forbidden by this commandment? There are Bible stories, I'm going to refer to a few, but I'm going to ask a series of questions first. Is it wrong for authorities to execute a murderer? Mm -hmm. You'll find what the Bible has to say in Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 5 on that. I'm not going to go into that at this point. But is it wrong for that? Is it wrong or was it wrong for the Israelites to kill and utterly destroy the inhabitants of the promised land? We'll learn what God had to say about that in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verses 1 and 2. They were told to go in and do that for a reason. That's where people get confused. Well, gee, they in the Old Testament, you know, God said, go out and kill all these people. So they might have in their mind the thought that it's okay to do, but it's not. Was it wrong for Saul 
and his army to kill and utterly destroy the Amalekites, including every man, woman, child, and infant, was Saul punished for his disobedience to God and not killing them all. God gave him a command, but we know that story, that he wasn't totally obedient. And there were consequences as a result of that. Was it wrong for God to kill and destroy everyone on earth, except for the eight people in Noah's family? People are going to challenge your faith. People are going to challenge the Ten Commandments. So people are going to ask you about that particular commandment. Well, look at all the killing that went on. Again, there is purpose and, and reason behind certain circumstances where God says, this is how it is to be. Is it wrong for a policeman to use his gun and perhaps even kill somebody to protect an innocent person and enforce the law? Is that wrong? No. Is it wrong for a soldier to kill somebody on the battlefield? No. The difference between kill and murder. There are justifiable reasons why killing will go on. There are no justifiable reasons to actually murder. God made sure that the right of every person's life is protected by his law. So therefore, there is a reason for killing. The general terms for killing are not used in the Sixth Commandment. Instead, very specific words are used, which is to forbid murder. Didn't say forbid killing, forbid murder. All murder is killing, but not all killing is murder. That can be confusing. All murder is killing, but not all killing is murder. Murder involves killing unlawfully with premeditation. It involves a deliberate, planned, premeditated attack against the fellow human being for the purpose of taking his life. And these reasons are really a sinful reason. The example of premeditation is that Colorado shooting at the theater, and they got the person that, that had been responsible for it. It was premeditated. He had planned to do that. Now his cop-out is, oh, I heard voices in my head telling me to do that. So he might be thinking, well, God was telling me to do that. Or was it Satan? I mean, that was premeditated. Mm -hmm. There was no excuse. There is no reason. Mm -hmm. He murdered those people. Mm -hmm. Murderers will plan the murder. And they know, I believe in their heart, that it is wrong to do so. There are also the kind of killing that is when a person causes the death of a person by an accident. An accidental killing is classified as killing but not murder. You're in a very bad car accident. You may not have been drunk or, or anything that caused your mental uh, state of mind to be altered. You may have been very consciously aware. But somebody crossed the lane and you hit head on. Somebody got killed in that accident. You survived. Did you commit a sin? It was an accidental killing. So if you look at that commandment, thou shalt not kill, it's really thou shalt not murder. Because in that car accident, you didn't say, I'm going to hit this person head on. You didn't plan that. That was an accident. The Bible makes a clear distinction between someone who kills a person accidentally without ever having hatred for the person. You didn't have hatred for the person in the other car. And someone who murders a person by lying in wait for him, which is an example of a carefully planned and premeditated murder motivated by hatred. Now there's an example in Deuteronomy uh, where it's considered to be accidental. And that's in chapter 19, verses 4 and 5. Linda, would you read that for me? Please? And this is the case of the manslayer who flees there that he may live. Whoever kills his neighbor unintentionally, not having hated him in time past, as when a man goes to the woods with his neighbor to cut timber, 
and his hand swings a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slips from the handle and strikes his neighbor so that he dies. There's an accidental murder. There's an example in the Bible. An accidental killing, not a murder. An accidental killing. Example in the Bible. It happens. We'll feel sorry about it. We should come to the Lord and, and express our sorrow that that did happen to a fellow man. But it wasn't a sin according to the commandment. Now if you would read chapter 19 and verse 11. But if anyone hates his neighbor, lies in wait for him, rises against him and strikes him mortally so that he dies, and he flees to one of these cities, then the elders of the city shall send and bring him from there and deliver him over to the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die. So here's an example where it's talking about lying in wait, planning it, premeditating. So in Deuteronomy in chapter 19, it points out two examples of accident and plan. God gave each of us our life. It is precious and to be highly valued, for we are made in His image. Today, however, we live in a society which gives little respect to human life, as demonstrated by the different laws regarding abortion. That's life. And they're saying, yeah, it's okay to do. Oh, I'm going to have health care pay for that or whatever the case might be. It's really, really a sad thing. There's no regard for human life in that, in, in that aspect. Taking of a human life is never to be taken lightly. Nevertheless, we find in the Bible there are times when taking a human life has been justified. What would happen to our country if we fail to defend ourselves, our borders against terrorist groups? When Pearl Harbor was invaded by the Japanese, the people in America recognized that a war response was needed. It was just, it was necessary and right. Warfare, as terrible as it is, is sometimes necessary. So, like the Bible stories, to protect from the enemy, enemy thank you, killing is justified. It was a murder. Killing was justified. To protect, as I said before, God made sure that the right of every person's life is protected by His law. So we have the right to defend our country. We have the right to defend ourselves. God said that's okay. We don't have the right to think about, I'm going to go and plan the death of somebody. That is definitely wrong. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, like, I've really never murdered anybody. However, to the statement that God states, yes. But remember that to a Christian, hatred is the same as murder. As I pointed out in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22. The Lord said the command extends not to the act itself, but also to the internal attitude behind the act. But of course murder is wrong. So is anger. Wishing that somebody were dead. Wishing that harm to somebody. That's just as bad as committing the physical act of doing a murder. In your heart, you have that desire for that person to have some, 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 something bad happen to that. Now, what would happen if, in fact, that actually came true? And you wished that somebody would be dead, and all of a sudden they were killed in a car accident. How would that make you feel? It would make you feel very good. And then you might come to the realization that, hmm, maybe your wish came true. Hmm, maybe I am a murderer. The thought of it is just as bad as the deed. Becoming angry and assuming a position of superiority over another. By calling him derogatory names demonstrates sinfulness of the heart. A person with a sinful heart is obviously a sinner and therefore is headed for trouble on Judgment Day. 
The fact remains that hatred of another person is the spiritual equivalent of murder. Again, I'll refer you back to Matthew chapter 5 and verses 21 to 22. So remember, the Lord has bound the entire human race by a kind of unity. The safety of all is to be entrusted to each of us. Protect one another. We are required faithfully to do what we can to defend the life of our neighbor. Same rules apply in regulating your mind. God knows our heart and this commandment. Therefore, it prohibits the murder of the heart. If we murder of the heart and our mind, we might have influence over others to do the same. Say, well, that's a good church-going person. But they're demonstrating that type of anger. They might say, well, that's okay to do. They do it, that's okay to do. We're showing the wrong sign. It seems to me that many people feel that the Sixth Commandment is an easy one to keep because they never consider doing physical harm to someone. But, if we examine our hearts, we may find that we are guilty of murder that results from our anger associated with it, and what we may have said or wished of bad things to another person. Again, the Christian view according to scriptures on murder. What is it? Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life. People just think it's okay. They're not going to come to Jesus and realize that that's a sin. And they're never going to ask for forgiveness. That'll be taken with them and God will say, I do not know you. You are a sinner. So having an awareness and educating the people in terms of what that sixth commandment really means. So a lot of people go, I'm good. I didn't kill anybody. Really, I didn't murder anybody. I'm good. Are you? Are you really good? What about your mind and your thoughts? I know through my own life, through the years, I, I, I've had those hatred thoughts growing up as a kid. Even to your own brother and sister. I wish they were dead. Okay, when something was going bad or, or wrong. And as I was preparing for this sermon, I looked back and I thought, wow, growing up, kids do say some really nasty things to one another. And I thought about it and reflected on it. I said, like, man, I am guilty of that. And I thought to cover the bases, I said, you know what? I better ask for forgiveness now. Because I may not have asked for forgiveness for all of those occurrences that I had just reminded myself of. Because when I was growing up, I was taught thou shalt not kill. I wasn't taught that there was a sin involved with the premeditated or the cause of harm to somebody in my mind and heart. Remember, God loves all of us. He does not love our sins. The breath of life that he has given to us is sacred and not for any man to destroy another man. It was made in the image of God. We are to protect one another. Amen. Amen. One more question.